Good afternoon, everybody. This is Rejuvenation. I am your host, Daniel Maddox. Um, this show is going to be about a variety of things. But what it's really going to be about is natural law, which I'll get to in a moment. Um, it's going to be about morality. It's going to be about the state of our world, the state of the consciousness of those who reside within that world, and what we can do, what we have to do, in order to change things for the better. Change things in the right direction instead of the wrong direction, which uh, I think everyone can get on board with. There, Everyone seems to have varying degrees of intentionality and true care uh, but one thing that everybody wants to be deep down is a good person is a hero is someone who's doing the right thing um, so this show will be about connecting with those people who truly want to change the world they want to act they want to put their energy behind something for the better, for the true good. Uh, not just uh, some frivolous um, organization or ideas of what they think. It's something more concrete, something truly tangible in their hearts, in their mind's eye, and in their souls. It'll be that which infuses them with life energy, that which brings them back from the brink of pure slumber, pure zombie mode. And I know that many people will relate immediately to what I'm saying, and some might not. But I know the vast majority of you will. You'll know what I'm talking about. There, there's, there's legions of people out there who are asleep at the wheel, asleep at the switch, and you know that you're in the same vehicle as them, ultimately, and you don't want to see the, the negative consequences of somebody being asleep at the switch. You want to change that fundamental reality. And that's what we're going to talk about here. We're going to talk about fundamental reality. We're not going to go off into um, into psyop after psyop. We're not going to touch bases with everything that needs to be addressed in in people's minds, because it, it truly would go on forever. There would be no cohesion. There would be no true value in what people get out of the show. And so my intention and my will directed through this this vehicle is that is rejuvenating people so it, it's it's a composite word it's rejuvenation and reju and, and, and elation so rejuvenation being to bring back to to bring back to life and elation being the the great feeling and emotion of that so more or less they're both interchangeable but it's a nice little word combination that I made for the show and for uh, an overarching um, paradigm shift that I am trying to bring into effect. The world sleeps. It is asleep. It, in, in the masses, it's asleep. And if it isn't asleep, it's incredibly misled in the state of awakeness that it is. Because, as you may or may not have noticed, there are a variety of thought patterns and beliefs. Only beliefs. They're not truly things that people know. They just hold them as beliefs that change from one day to the next, one week to the next, one month to the next, one day to the year to the next, whatever. doesn't matter. They're beliefs. They're not true knowledge. And... In this show, we're going to get down to the causal factors. What 
really, truly is causing all of the madness, all of the sickness, all of the insecurities and the fears and the abominations from one spectrum to the other. I don't even need to name them. You already know what I'm talking about. Uh, because everyone that is drawn to this site, to this channel, to this podcast, to this message from the digital realm, from the physical to the digital to the physical, to all, that is what the message is. That those people that are drawn to it are here for that. Now, I don't want anybody to have a false idea. I am not a New Age spiritualist. I'm not going to tell you, it's okay, everything's alright, there's nothing wrong, everything is just as it should be. That's a half-truth. Yes, everything is as it should be, because everything has a cause and effect. The laws of the universe are working flawlessly, and they always do. People have done this, and this is the reaction. Oh, no, that's, it, that's not bad. Well, you're right, it isn't bad, but the things that are happening are bad. You know, it's not necessary. It is a, a shitstorm. It is an inevitable suicide that society is engaging in. They, they believe, and I, by they I mean society at large, which means the masses, they believe erroneously that there is such a thing as authority, that there is such a thing as one man, one group of men, one group of women, one group of people, period, having authority over another, which is erroneous. Now you might say, oh, well, we all work together, look at what we've built, look at everything that we have because of authority. Yes, look at everything that we have. We have unlimited toxic waste being poured into the atmosphere, into our environment. We have unlimited toxic ideology spread from, from here to the, to the nether realms about how one need only pray, one need only wish and, and hope that the, the externalized savior will come. It could be the Easter Bunny. It doesn't even matter whether the tooth fairies come with a magic wand. Boop! All your, all your sins are forgiven. <laughs> You, you needed to do only this and believe in me. And now everything is good. It's time to go up to the rose, rose champagne, you know, kingdom of, of reflecting mirrors of love. And, and all is well. No. That's not how the world works. That's not how natural law works. And then if you really believe that, go ahead. Good luck. Let me know. In a few years, let me know how it's gone. In any amount of time, let me know how that's really going. Oh, well, it's not It's not working out now, but it will. It will. Good luck with that. Good luck with uh, meditating your way to bliss, uh, only hoping and wishing and wanting something to happen, but never doing anything about it. Good luck with that. That's not how it works. That's never how it'll work. And I'm going to explain that as time goes on through this podcast. Um, we need to have a true trinity. Oh, he said religious shit. Turn him off. Trinity? What? What, are we in the Matrix? Yeah, oh, we're in the Matrix. We are in the Matrix. But it's not the, the Matrix that you think. It's so much more... What is the word for it? evil, so much more pernicious, so much more simple. It's far more simple than the movie. Oh, we're in a digital, we're all jacked into some digital reality and our, our real bodies are out somewhere? Yeah, maybe. But it's far more simple than that. The matrix that we all live with, the matrix that we manifest every moment of every day, is the matrix that we create through consent. The matrix of consenting to authority, consenting to this man, he, she, fit, it thing over there, controls what I do, and what 
all of us will do. You know, people uh, gave up monarchy a long time ago. They said, eh, you know, no, the, no these, the, the crown, nah, they don't get to rule us. Now, government gets to rule us. And we control the government. Matrix 101, right there. Ain't happening. Not true. There is no, we control the government. Unless we truly do. Unless we truly do step into our power. And at every turn, every turn, whenever the government tries to do something that isn't to, to our true path, our true liking, our truest, highest good, which... Basically, wrong only boils down to one thing. There's only one wrong in the world. That. Danny. That. My neighbor. His dog barking. And him. You know. Beating him. And then keeping me awake at night. That's not theft. Okay. He's just being a jerk. And he's an asshole for beating his dog. And no. He is stealing your sleep away. He's stealing your peace of mind. He's stealing your the amount of energy that you can commit to the next day because you didn't get enough rest that night. Well, okay, maybe I can understand. If someone kills you, they steal your life. But, I mean, if I cheat on my wife, I'm not stealing anything from her. Oh, oh, what? You're stealing your agreement, your peace between each other that you would be faithful. You're stealing her peace of mind. You're stealing the trust. Your anxiety is created, so you're stealing the health away. There's nothing that you can do that's wrong that isn't theft. <clears throat> and so that's another thing that we're going to be talking about a lot around here is exactly what are your rights and what aren't. And people will say, well, we have the life, the, the, the right to life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. And that's given to us by the government. Shut up. Stop right there. No. Those rights are from the creator. Okay. Oh, you mean God. Yeah, sure, God, the creator, the one, the only, whatever. Male dominated. You see, there's so many things that are triggered by people immediately. And I know that I'm hitting points left and right and so fast that you can't even keep your head on straight, some of you. But a lot of you are, it's just, it's clicking like never before. Or, you know, if you've listened to any kind of good, decent podcast with people who talk about these kind of things, which are few and far between, for anybody that's going to be talking about natural law, morality, right and wrong, authority, uh, I mean, pretty much what on earth is happening, Mark Passio, maybe, um, uh, Larkin Rose, or, uh, the Anarch, Anarch Path, or Anarchast, or, there's, there's very few that will actually talk about it. You won't be hearing about these things in many other places, not yet. But this is the this is just another voice to the many. I've been asked this before, and um, when I was still very much stuck in in following other people, and when I was still doing my learning and, and absorbing of information, people would say, "Well, what do we do?" And I say, "Well, invest in the alternative media." And at the time, that meant to me watching it and buying products or whatever that free you, such as Alex Jones's platform, regardless of what you think of him, he reaches a large number of people and has a large number of guests with a, a variety of angles. And um, that's one platform that I would have suggested before. But now, I'm just going to take exactly what I said, invest in alternative media, and just take it to a greater extent. Do it yourself. Do it yourself. Because there's nothing more powerful in this world than action. Thoughts, emotions, everything stems from that. But the truest manifestation of it is your actions. And so this, what I'm doing now, recording this video, Talking to you about these things, this is the truest, greatest good that you can do doing it. But it has to be in the right aspect, you know, because you can do a you could do a ton of shit that is totally antithetical to the good. 
and that's not where we want to go. That's not where I'm going, and that's not where anyone that I have any influence over uh, uh, is going to have anything other than that from, from me. You know, anything else for me to say to them. And by influence, I mean the people that I directly associate with and talk to. They're going to hear where I'm coming from, just as I'm going to hear where for them come from. It's not, not a one-way street. Uh, and I'm not controlling them, and they're not controlling me. It's a community. It's a consensus between people that should associate with each other. If you have a friend who in no way serves you, in no way even serves themselves, it's time to cut ties. Really, there's, it, it, we've reached the decision point. And, uh, you know, if they ever come back to, to, to being grounded and with it, good for them. And then you can come back and reassociate. But, uh, you know, there's this, we're the three best friends that anybody could have kind of mentality where uh, people just stick together because that's all they've ever known, even though they're destroying each other with their uh, long-held, long-standing modes of being, which are really modes of destruction of being, such as alcohol and drug use, um, which do as, do as you want with yourself, you know? But there's consequences. You're going to suffer. You're going to hurt those around you, and you're going to limit yourself in ways that... <laughs> there's no telling. For every minute that you don't do and act according to your truest self, which believe me, drugs and alcohol are not according to your truest self. Uh, they may be required in many, many aspects and many circumstances to free yourself uh, from the mind control, which is uh, my story in, in many regards. Uh, and I'll get into that in a minute here, where um, Pretty much, it took massive amounts of psychedelics for me to break the hold of my ego, concretized ego consciousness, where I was so sure, so enshrined in the false narrative that I'm the shit. I don't need to do anything. I'm just gonna, I'm just that good. Without the action, without the true intention, without the true care. See, when, going back to the Trinity now. Thoughts, emotions, and actions. So your thoughts, you're like your intellect. And that's where all of it comes together. But then your emotions are the guiding principle, your intentions. What is the heart behind this? What is why? It's the why. The, you know, the thoughts are the how. The heart is the why. And then the actions are... Um, the expressions of it. And so, really, that's the Holy Father, which is mentalism, the Holy Mother, which is care, which is emotions, and then the Holy Child, which is the actions, which are the uh, synthesis of those two. So there you go. That's what that's what it all boils down to. What's your what's your divine child doing? Is it even a divine child or is or is your actions completely devoid of care? And therefore it's a bastard child. Or is it completely devoid of thinking and a, another bastard child? Because if you are basing your actions completely on your intentions, but you're not even thinking about it, and you're just letting your emotions run away with you, what do you, you know these people. I just wanted to help! I've seen, I've heard stories from close friends where they literally almost killed their children because they were, they were oh, we'll do good! And, and, and then that child was taken away and sent to uh, an institution. The mother was sent to an institution and the daughter was kept away from her. And well, we can go into the, the CPS and that nightmare, Child Protective Services and the whole... The Universal... The UCC, Universal Commercial Code, all of it and how we're owned via uh, Basically, just dark sorcery of words and language. And that's another thing. Uh, we need to understand words. We need to understand what they mean, where they come from, what the intention behind them is, and the double meanings. Because any good word has more than one meaning. Any 
uh, thing that you're trying to portray, any symbol. Oh, oh, we'll see that, like, the all-seeing eye is the perfect example. People will say, it only means the Illuminati of, of dark, darkness and death and evil. And I was on that train for a long time. But it really truly represents is um, the all-seeing eye of God, right? And ooh, people say, oh, the pyramid's going up to uh, the all-seeing eye, and then that's the eye of Lucifer. Uh, okay, the eye of the light bearer, the one that knows the, the consciousness. See, those bricks that are leading up to the all-seeing eye, the Dark New World Order wants to cover up that eye so that the light of the Creator no longer shines. And so that's the brick. That's their work. To create a temple where that eye is covered up and the spirit is completely cut off from the world. There's two kinds of masons. And I know that I'm, I am really going down an insane path here. Okay? Uh, but stick with me. This is really... This podcast is many things. But... Right now, what I'm what I'm coming to is I'm giving you basically the warp drive version of everything that we're going to be talking about, and I've and I've touched on a bunch of things. So I was just saying about two masons. There's the light masons who want to deconstruct the walls and make no boundaries, and therefore we're all one. And then there's the dark masons who want to build with a brick and have division and ha and have the covering up of the spirit. And I've learned these things. And so many other things from uh, What on Earth is Happening, which is dot com, which is a website by Mark Passio. Um, he's an independent researcher who lives in Philadelphia, and he's been through a, a ton of shit in his life, okay? And I'm going to let you discover all that. But basically, I'm giving you the QuickBooks version, and that is the, the college course. And I'm not even finished. Not nearly in, in looking into his podcast, let alone all the information that can be found on this site or through his, his ARC drives, which he, which he has available for people, which you can get a, a terabyte of information. Believe me, I've gone maybe through 300 kilobytes, and I'm already dumbstruck. Kilobytes. That's, that's a third... It's not even a third of a gigabyte, and a terabyte is a thousand gigabytes. So you can imagine where and how that'll leave you off if you if you really go down that that path. As they say in the ancient traditions, if you're not willing to take a full drink here, don't begin, because you'll take a small sip, you'll be intoxicated, and you'll believe that you know. That's what it says in the Kybalion which is a small little book, about 100 pages, which goes into the Hermetic Principles, the seven basic Hermetic Principles, which are mentalism, everything is mind, polarity, everything has two different states, but it's the same thing, or two different opposing levels of it, so love and hate are, are polarities, but it's, it's the same thing uh, at different levels, different... Uh, densities, let's say. Then there's rhythm. Everything in the universe goes between states. It goes up and down, just like a wave function. Then there's gender. Everything in the universe has feminine and masculine principles. And, um... There's, there's three more. Uh... What are they? I'm going to think of them in a second here. But there's seven principles, and in the Kai Bell, it talks about that. It talks about how these these seven principles, the seven hermetic principles, are um, the keys to natural law. Okay? And the natural law, I, I talked about this in the beginning, natural law is basically that which you are allowed to do, that, that which you have the right to do, and that which you don't have the right to do. And these rights are inherent. That's what a law is. A law is not something created by man. It, it precedes man. It, it's before man. It'll be after man. It, it is in this universe, and it doesn't change. Gravity, for instance. You can jump off a cliff and say, I don't believe in gravity, and die. 
that's that's a law that is in effect and that we can't change. We may be able to alter them through uh, certain sciences and things like that, but they remain in effect. And that's only gravity that I'm talking about that we can alter, like through. It's not even altering; it's just uh, bypassing it through certain means, like dropping in a plane and very very quickly, and then you you lift up or being in space, for instance. Um, but then if you're just outside the field of the law, you're not. You're not overcoming it. So, and if you want to be free, you're going to have to start reading books. You're going to have to get off your ass and really start incorporating your thoughts, emotions, and actions. So, I'm thinking about a book, I'm thinking about learning something. And then I'm thinking about, and then I'm, my emotions and my intentions are saying, I want this thing. And then my actions are picking up the book, reading it, actually making the effort. Because effort is the work. It is the action to learn it, to know it, to bridge um, the flaws in the matrix in your own matrix of your own mind because these flaws are what allows the greater matrix to, to freaking consume us all in so many ways so the seven general principles of natural law of hermeticism are mentalism vibration polarity gender I've already mentioned those then there's cause and effect everybody knows that you hit a wall it's gonna hurt uh, then there's um, vibration Nothing in the universe is at rest. Everything is always moving at one state or another. That's why this is a bowl of, of, of made of ceramic or whatever, and then this is metal because it's vibrating at different states, and it, and it stayed at that rest through the laws that allow it to stay in a certain vibratory pattern. And then if it's dis disassociated and turns into other things, it'll turn into other things. And then there's correspondence. So, as above, so below. People have heard that. Uh, as within, so without. So, from the smallest scale to the largest scale, the universe organizes itself self-similarly. So, it's like the fractal universe idea, where from the smallest to the largest, it's the exact same thing, and it's all encoded within, within itself. Now, if you spend any kind of time really, truly diving deep into these things, and really meditating on them, and saying to yourself, you know, what does this mean? How does this really express itself? You'll come to greater and greater and greater levels of, of awareness and consciousness. And um, consciousness is what it's all about. You see somebody who is, what, are, okay. what kind of people in this world are the ones that are the most annoying or bothersome or the ones that do the, seem to do the most damage the ones that everybody seems to be worried about prime examples Trump prime examples Kim Jong-un people that are just like I got my finger on a button and my, my buttons bigger than you and they're just acting like buffoons what is that what does that really represent that you could say they're idiots but I've met people who yeah and they and you'd be right because idiot means someone who does not know the self and that means that they're not conscious. But uh, I've met plenty of people who are very, their, their intelligence isn't there, they're not smart, but they have so much awareness, they have so much consciousness, they, they spot things and they're, they're aware of feelings and emotions and where people are really at to levels that PhD tenure scientists slash professors would be looking like buffoons licking their own ass. Okay? Because it doesn't, it doesn't matter how smart you are if your consciousness is, in, is below the sand. And I've met plenty of people like this who are incredibly intelligent, but, and they act on that intelligence, but they're, they're devoid of care. They're devoid of true emotion. And I used to be one of these people to the extent of being a terminator, to the extent of being a machine mind where 
the only comfort and security that I felt that I had was in emulating a killing machine, such as Arnold Schwarzenegger, which was one of my childhood heroes. Uh, well, if Arnold acts this way and he's so tough, I'll never be as buff or strong as him, but if I have that same mentality, if I have that same persona, then I'll be protected. And to a large extent, that did work. It did work. But the primary effect of that was people hating me and me hating myself. Because there you go, there's the care. The, the care that really didn't even come into my life until I met a beautiful young girl who activated my heart. And then I subsequently, unable, being unable to handle that, uh, destroyed our relationship and destroyed that care, that small amount of it. But that set me on a, on a journey of more than 10 years now, because that happened in around 2007, 2006, uh, of really self-discovery. And for the last 10 years, all I've been doing is traveling the world, doing every psychedelic I can get my hands on, uh, really focusing on how broken I was and figuring out why. I mean, every relationship that I have now I is only because I worked so hard at... How did I become this way? Danny, I, I, I told my best friend um, one day, after coming back from Korea, I did an exchange uh, program there. I was like, Blake, I fucking hate myself. No, I really hate myself. Like, this is, this sucks. And he put his arm around me and he said, Buddy, let's get out. Let's leave. We're moving. We're, we're going. We're going on a journey, a trip, an adventure. And uh, so we found a globe. And we said, where is the farthest away that we can go from Pacific Grove, which is where I live in, in California? We took the globe, took here where I live now, all the way around, and it just happened to be India. Delhi, India. At least, that's... I didn't actually measure it out, you know, with the, with the compass and, and, you know, actually do the math, but thereabouts, that's what it was. And, um... So he said, hey, don't people go to India to awaken the spirit and to find themselves? Long story short, went there, had an amazing self-realizing experience, which was just the beginning. And we came back from there. And then it was just everything that I had shunned, because I was a, a complete straight edge. I didn't do drugs. I didn't smoke. I didn't uh, drink. I didn't associate with people that did those things, except for my friends who I would always try to get out of those things. Um, but then I just went hard into it. I went into the to the uh, the gangster life, you could say, and uh, I learned about music. Like before that, the only music that I considered even worthy of a name was like classical piano, Mozart, Beethoven's type stuff. Everything else was the devil's music, even though I was not religious in any sense. Like, I, I left that boat, I jumped ship on that when I was 13, uh, after being a Catholic for quite some time, in name only. Um, so, I went into this new life and discovered more and more about myself and, and the evils that I was really perpetrating, the people that I was hurting, especially those those closest to me. I mean, I was one of those very strange kids where, by all appearances, I should be popular. Uh, I have a, a good family. Uh, I live in a great town. I'm interested in, you know, sports and uh, somewhat popular things. Um, and I stayed out of trouble, mostly. Like, of the of the drug sort, or that kind of thing. I would run around, I did things called night missions, where I'd run around the city with my friends after after curfew, which was 10, 10 p.m., and uh, act like ninjas. And I'm sure it drove the old people nuts, 
and uh, there's assassins in my yard. And I can just hear that right now being told to the police. Um, and but this was previous to 9/11, so things were still very much different and open. Once 9/11 happened, and we were still playing war in the streets with guns that looked pretty much like AR-15s and <laughs> had dropped actual shells onto the ground and stuff. Yeah, yeah, that that ended quickly when the whole squad teams came in and like, all right, kids, the jig is up. You know, this this amount of freedom is done, and we certain people moved away, but that's besides the point. So that ended. Um, and long story short, yet again, I found myself realizing the spirit because I had buried that the notion of it died with religion in my in my eyes. And for many people, that's very much the case. You either very much embrace the religion, which, by the way, means to bind you down, to tie you down, to hold to, to thwart back. That's what religion means in Latin, religare. Um, and this is why I said that terms, terminology is so important. Because if you're not understanding the words that are being spoken on a daily basis, there's spells happening. It's not a coincidence that it's called spelling. Okay? There's there's invocations happening all around us at all times. And it's like that movie They Live, which I can't highly recommend enough, where they, these guys get a hold of these sunglasses that decode the subliminal, subliminal messages in reality, where they're just walking down downtown Chicago, I believe it is, and then they're wearing, they're wearing these glasses, and when he takes the glasses off, it says, 50% uh, off sale, uh, get your dresses or whatever, and then it, he puts on the glasses and it's because consume, do not think, obey, uh, reproduce, uh, don't ask questions. You know, and every advertisement is a different subliminal. And these are, this is what this show will provide. Rejuvenation is about bringing you back to your truest consciousness, which is pure consciousness. And I can't, you know, I can only show you the door, as Morpheus tells Neo before she's the oracle. You have to walk through it. And after you walk through it, you have to continue walking, continue listening, and, continue, and then continue to do, and continue to bring people back to that same door that you crossed. Which is what I learned through Mark Passio's work. Um, I was in a state of total fear, perpetual fear, by listening to people like Alex Jones. Uh, not to knock what he does, he reaches a lot of people and he does a lot of good, but through through the avenues that I reached with him, I went into the dark side of, this, of the research, which you have to do. You have to look at the dark. People in the New Age movement want to say, I don't need to look at the dark. If I look at the dark, that's feeding the dark. And what Mark Passio likes to say about that is, if I'm coming at you with a left hook, and you ignore it, it's not happening. If I don't, if I don't uh, acknowledge it, then it's not real. You're, you're going to wake up in a few minutes, what happened, with some teeth missing on the pavement. That's what's going to happen if you ignore the dark. Because that's what's happening. There's a train, there's a freight train coming. One of those freight trains that you see online sometimes, where there are military freight trains with, I don't know, like 500 Hummers, and then the artillery pieces, and all the, the, the uh, uh, accompanying equipment of war. You, you know those freight trains? The ones that take like six miles to stop? Because they weigh so damn much that ain't nothing stopping it, okay? Uh, so, and then some of you might be saying, well, because this is what I'm thinking, well, if it can't be stopped, why, are we, why do we need to look at it? It can be avoided, okay? If that's where the way this freight train is coming, but the majority of people are standing in front of the freight train, and I'm telling you, and some people are saying, it can't be avoided, there's nothing that we can do, all right. Uh, yeah, it may, it may be coming through, but we could get those people out of the path of the damn freight train, and then they won't, they won't be hit by it, and then that is, that's the primary cause that we're, uh, of that effect that we're trying to limit, and that we're trying to take away from, from that whole freight train ideology of it's coming, and, oh, well, the work is done, it's been set in motion, nothing we can do. Get out of the mind control, because that's mind control. Thinking that there's nothing that you can do, and then acting that way. What do you? What kind of mentality do you really generate 
when in your mind and heart, truly, that's what you believe, that there is nothing you can do, that there's nothing worthwhile doing. What is the inevitable action that you will take besides nothing? Well, for the most of the people that I know that have looked into this in any kind of way, their actions are to um, go further, go deeper into uh, karmic debt, into further into hating themselves, further into propagating the evil. You know, it's one thing to say, well, to basically uh, say, well, I've given up and uh, I'm going to live my life exactly the way I was living it. Uh, but see, the thing is, is that once you've given up, you don't live it the same way. You never live it the same way once you've looked at this stuff and uh, live day to day. Because the default mode of anybody that doesn't do good works, doesn't do what's necessary, what's right in light of all this stuff, they get worse. They get more drunk. They do more drugs. They they punish other people more. They're more depressed. Even if they don't have to hurt other people, they, they eat themselves alive at a, at a quicker rate, which only helps to serve the negative. The less than instead of the more than. Good. And ultimately, that's, that's what this is all about. Like I keep saying, rejuvenation. We're trying to bring people back. And let's put it this way. You look at yourself when you're five years old. And I know that's going to be a different story for everybody. But for the most part, your vision of the world was, was expansive and it was magical. Even if it was really tough, it was, it was more real. It was more there. Every waking moment was a true waking moment. And then there's people that now in their later lives, every waking moment, it's like they're already still kind of asleep. Maybe not so much like about this information, but they feel as though, you know, life isn't really worth living or it's all a downer and there is no magic and uh, it's only all evil or they're, or they're bored. Every waking moment, it's like, oh, it's just the grind again. And there's nothing to look forward to. There's no, there's no good works to be done in your vicinity. We need to bring people back to the five-year-old. Back to the... Every moment is something, is another moment that I can do something. Every moment is another moment that I can affect change. Cause and effect is always happening. It's always now. All the rules, all the seven, seven hermetic principles are always in effect. It, it doesn't ever end. Okay? You can go from one end of the universe to the other. You can go in a black hole and out of the black hole. doesn't matter. The rules are the same. The rules of, of uh, the seven hermetic principles, which as I said, are Mentalism, correspondence, vibration, polarity, gender, cause and effect, and rhythm. And I want you to really look into that. Look up the Kaibalion. You can go on YouTube and, and have the whole book read to you. Okay? Uh, it doesn't take that long. It's like a 100-page book in paperback, on hard copy, and then maybe 50, 50 on a PDF. You can go on what on, earth is, what on earth is happening com, and you can find all that material there. And, uh, like I keep saying, this information is vital to you changing anything. Without the knowledge of right and wrong, the best you could hope to do is achieve right 50% of the time by chance alone. That's the greatest change. That is the, that is, it, it, I used to ask myself this all the time. Danny, what's the what's the greatest good that I can do? What's the most good that I can do? How do I, how is change truly affected? You know? Oh, not paying taxes or screaming my lungs out to everybody that I see about uh, all the terrors that I see or uh eating right or these are all part and parcel. 
But the truest, highest, greatest effect for change is knowing the difference between right and wrong. How can you do anything else? Uh, you know, but that first, because right and wrong, right versus wrong, knowing the difference, that's principle. Principle means the first things. Principles, that's what it means. So, your principles come first, before everything else. You know, it's like the Stoic idea where uh, somebody asks, well, what comes first? Family, God, money, uh, or your principles? Many people would say family first or God first, but the answer is principles. If you die for your principles, best believe you're dying for your family or for God or for, for the God of creation, which is love, which is uh, in polarity, it's all things, good and bad, but it's the same thing. Um, so yeah, principles are come first before before you, because God is a principle. God is the principles. So you could say God first and that makes sense. But what do you really mean when you say that? Am I, do I mean... Uh, the, the, you know, the the white guy in the clouds with his beard and, and, and we're, we're, we're at the gates of Pe with Peter there d deciding our fate, that God, the, you know, the hating, resentful, fearful, conniving God of the Jews, you know, that, that angry God one? Or are we just talking about astrotheology? Are we talking about a deep, embedded history of our race and we're going to talk about that too but this this show is going to be everything it's going to be and then that contradicts what i said earlier about us not jumping on every single topic i feel as though this show is going to be a hit and run sideshow of such powerful information that you may or may not like and you may or may not want to hear. Most people won't want to hear it because as Mark says, and I totally concur, uh, people run from responsibility. The last thing that they want to hear, the last thing that I wanted to hear was that the world is the way it is because of me, because I was doing wrong, because I was consenting, because I was acquiescing my power to the powers that shouldn't be. And you know who I'm talking about. You know what I'm talking about. And people should step into their power. They should regain their power. They should reintegrate who they really are, which is an unlimited being having a limited experience for a time. And I'm not going to say where we go after because I don't know. I haven't been. I have an inkling. Uh... But what I do know, and believe me, there is things that you can know. Because if you believe that there is nothing that you can truly know, it's called solipsism. It's the greatest disease in the world. And it's also the greatest tool for evil in the world. Because if you can convince people that there's, you can't truly know anything, you'll do anything. You'll be told anything and believe it. And that means that you have no morals. As a matter of that belief, you, you just could not have morals if you believe that there's nothing that could be known. There's nothing that, that that's true and that it can be known. So know it. Know that there's a truth. Know that you can know it and that it can be found here. It can be found in many places if you will only look. And that's where we're at. That is where we're at. We're at the crossroads beyond the crossroads. There's been a couple ways back, there's been crossroads where um, lines were crossed in the sand and people did nothing or it wasn't enough. And people got used to it. It's the boiling frog analogy over and over again. We are being bombarded with infotainment, entertainment, uh, Poison which passes as food. Mental viruses that pass as ideology. Such as politics. Politics doesn't exist. It's, it's, a, it's a dialectic. 
It is a dividing force between the masses, between different segments of the mind, right brain, left brain, uh, and everyone in between that doesn't follow uh, those, those precepts, which just fall off as third party dust on the pavement to be trampled. Um, so wake up, get up, activate, you know, whatever, whatever meme you need to get yourself up and out of the slumber that you now reside in, that I have resi resided in, I have allowed myself, me personally, to sit on this information. I've made dozens of videos. Oh, it's not good enough. Oh, the video quality, this, this, and that. And then that's all true, you know? This is a 720p camera, which I've had for literally 10 years, okay? And I, I'm running old equipment. But, come on. <laughs> How many times have you seen the, the day being saved by Morse code? Or by tapping on the wall? And then people getting the message. The message is what matters. The format and, and the 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 beauty of it and, and the integrity of it, uh, all those things matter, but what what's really integral is the message and the information. So down below is going to be a few websites, which I frequent, which talk about all these things. And um, I'm making a call out right now because really I made this video, uh, what really spurred me on was listening to Mark Passio in his most recent interview from the Truth Mind Reality Conference, the you know, the the, the podcast that go out before it, which is it's happening March tenth, uh, in Philadelphia. I believe it's thirty five dollars a ticket. It's an all day event. Um he was given a podcast that listen, I've been this is Mark saying it, I've been working for ten fucking years. Ten fucking years and he's losing it. And I and he doesn't charge for any of the information that he he provides. He's been working ceaselessly, ceaselessly. And he he gave in this interview how much money he makes in a year. And believe me, if you tried to live on that amount of money in your life, it would be as though uh, you had just been gut kicked by a mule on on cybernetic steroid enhancements. And your your throat would be on the pavement, okay? And I don't I don't almost don't even want to say how much it is because it's it's below poverty line. And he has been putting out video after video, telling people all these things, really working ceaselessly, and his personal life has suffered and everything. And anyways, I'm doing this in honor of him. I'm starting this, and it's. You know, I'm cussing and I'm doing things that he doesn't do in his podcast. And, he, you know, he's much more relaxed about it. But I can't be. Um, I mean, I could be. But I don't, I don't feel like... I don't feel the need. I don't feel the need to censor what, what is going on. And how things are going on. Because the more we censor, the more we sheepishly crowd ourselves into the corner and go... Oh, no couldn't couldn't conceive of doing that you know what happens to, sh to sheep a sheep in the corner <laughs> into the pavement into someone's land shop burger all across the world some Satanist is going to be dying on your sheepish corpse and I ain't having it okay Action is now, action is now. Action is now, and it is always now, and get up. So, thank you so much. I would like to also put a caveat that the majority of what Rejuvenation was supposed to be, and what I envisioned it to be, was a vegan health food store. A grocery store. An outlet for vegans and people who are like-minded. And now I'm thinking, since that would invite, involve a great deal of commerce, there's, there's ways that I have to structure it in which it, it doesn't feed the machine. 
So once I figure that out, then that will be the, the, what the name Rejuvenation truly goes for. But it'll also, I guess, since now that I've intimately tied it to all these things that I'm talking about, it will always be known part and partial with these things, in addition to being a vegan uh, outlet for health. Because you are what you think, and you are what you eat. And that's just a matter of fact. You become what you concentrate on and what you what you focus on um, and what you put into yourself, but both with words and knowledge and with and physically. So whether you believe that we we can survive as vegans or not, I guess that doesn't really matter since the whole human race is on the chopping block, anyways. Especially since we are a huge meat eating society, uh, which pretends to love animals, pretends to care, but while they're petting their dog or whatever, who is, is tr a true carnivore, uh, and then they're eating, you know, a cow or whatever, and then, and then like, I've had this discussion with one of my other friends, it's like, you don't really care. You're not an animal lover. You, you butcher, you're a part of the butchering process and, and torture process of countless animals. And they lost their shit on me. They lost their, how dare you tell me I don't care about animals, you know? Because they very much want a dog. And we, we go through these intense conversations, my friend and I, all the time. And it's good for our relationship. You know, we get angry. We, we raise our voices and it's time to square off. Maybe not in the, in the physical fight sense, but, you know, uh, on the mental plane. And the emotional plane. And, it, and if, it was, if it really had to come down to a physical fight, you know, not for blood, but for getting it out there, then that, that's how it should be. You know, because anger is important. Testosterone is very important. But there's a war on testosterone. And I'm going to get into that. I'm going to get how the, the, you know, women are getting turned turned against men and men against women. And it's a huge gender war. And it's one division, 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 division. It's the Dark Masons building walls. And that's how they control. And if you want to be a light mason, if you want to be a person that builds with light, which means you're shedding light, you're you're opening up the space, you're you're getting rid of the divisions, you're getting rid of the walls, then you do that. But the choice is now. The choice is always now. It's in every moment of every day that we live. And you must make the right choice. And so, oh, but there is no real right and wrong. It's all sub subjective. Wrong. Wrong. There's no such thing as subjective truth. There's, there's right. There's the rights you have the right to take. The actions that you have the right to take. And then ones that you don't have to take. And I already explained that there's only one wrong, theft. If you're not stealing from anyone, if you're not taking that which is not yours, then by default, you're doing right. Okay? And it all goes back to the golden rule. Uh, the words attributed to Jesus himself. Whether you believe that or not. Whether he existed or not. Whether it's astrotheology or whether it's astrotheology. Do unto others as, as you would have others do unto you. Okay? And that, that boils down to all of that. And the only reason that you'd want someone to hurt you is if you truly don't love yourself and you don't know who you are and you don't know what's going on with you. And then and that's why you have this twisted sense of what you want from others and what you want to give to others and what others think and what others should receive from you. So love your neighbor as you love yourself. Well, how are you going to, how is that going to happen if your love is so twisted that you think pain, pure pain, and suffering is love? Because that's what the dark occult really is. They, they, they've been so turned around, so twisted, so, so contorted from, from, from prime that to them, pain is love. To them, the destruction of, of, of good things, of, of emotion is good. So, um, that is the whirlwind tour of what rejuvenation will be and what it, it will continue to be. I don't have any set times. I don't have any, uh, I don't have any plans, you know? This is just a spur of the moment, off the cuff, things that I had to say, things that have to be said, and I'm starting in, uh, I'm setting into motion something which should have already been set into motion, but 
that's besides the point. It's being set in motion now. And uh, welcome to Root Jubilation. Welcome back. Uh, because you've been here before. And if I have anything to say about it, you're going to be here for a while. And maybe forever. And if that's the case, whew, Rejuvenation is it for all time, for all of us. Daniel Maddox, signing out.